Hello, my name is Randy Flinders and I'm with Greensoft Technology and today we're going to talk about reach. Specifically, we're going to talk about the once an article, always an article ruling and what it means to the industry of the electronics manufacturers. So what reach is, is reach is basically a chemicals control legislation in the European Union and it seeks to provide restrictions, authorization requirements, communication requirements for all substances or mixtures that are imported or manufactured in the EU and it applies to any product that's made out of those things, which we call articles. And so by that nature, all electronics products are in scope for the REACH regulation. Okay. So what really we need to do here under REACH is under Article 33, we need to look at the presence of substances of very high concern and see if any of those substances are present in any articles within our product over a thousand parts per million. If they are there, then we have some certain communication and possibly some, some notification requirements that may be triggered. So it's important that we do this correctly. Uh, to make this challenging, there's currently 174 substances on that list of substances of very high concern, and that list grows every six months. So even if we've already done this in the past, we're probably behind and need to do it again. So before we can actually do this analysis and determine you know, whether or not we have a thousand parts per million of any one of these substances in an article within our product, we first have to understand what an article really is under this regulation. And that's what we're gonna talk about here because that's been the subject of a lot of discussion. There was an EU ruling out of the uh, EU Court of Justice on this, and also some new guidance that just came out in June 2017 from the European Chemicals Agency. So let's take a look at what this really means. So originally, how the industry was approaching this requirement is when they said, okay, um, the definition of an article is an object which during production is giving a special shape, surface, or design which determines its function to a greater degree than does its chemical composition. So in other words, it's not the chemistry that makes it what it is, like say Windex, but it's the shape of it. For example, a cell phone wouldn't be a cell phone if you melt it down. It's not the chemistry, it's the actual shape and design of the cell phone that makes it function as a cell phone. So um, the industry said, okay, no problem. Let's look at what product I'm making and see if it meets the definition of an article. So if I manufacture a, a cell phone, yes, that meets the definition of an article. If I manufacture a, a television set or a computer, those both are articles. So therefore, all I need to do is check for the amount of SVHCs present in my product, over a thousand parts per million, compared to the mass of the product. And so you can see in the previous slide here, we can see that even if we have a component within that product that contains a thousand parts per million of an SVHC, it's less than a thousand parts per million of our entire article and therefore we don't have to notify anybody, right? And so that's basically what the interpretation was. So if we look at how that worked in the supply chain, we can see that if I make a lead frame that's used in ICs and I sell that to an IC manufacturer, Okay, I take that lead frame and I note that I have 0 0.02 grams of a certain SVHC present, and the lead frame is two grams in mass. Therefore, um, that SVHC is 10,000 parts per million of my lead frame. Since that exceeds the 1,000 parts per million threshold, I'm required to communicate that information to my professional customers, which in this case is the manufacturer of the IC who's using my lead frame. Okay. So now that manufacturer, that IC, is going to incorporate my lead frame into their IC, and then they're going to sell that to a motherboard manufacturer. So now they need to determine what their responsibilities are. So if we look at this 0 0.02 grams of SVHC present in that lead frame, we can see that when we compare that to the entire mass of the article of the product of the IC, we can see that it's below 1,000 parts per million. It's at 952 parts per million. So there's no responsibility for the IC manufacturer to notice, notify the manufacturer of the PCBA or the, the motherboard that that SVHC is present because it's below 1,000 parts per million of the IC. Taking it a step further, we're gonna see that, manu that manufacturer of the motherboard sell their motherboard to the computer manufacturer. And when they look at that SVHC at 0 0.02 grams of point, and we're talking about 25 parts per million, of the motherboard, not even close to a thousand. So again, that information is no longer required to be communicated. And it even dilutes even further at the server or the computer manufacturer when they say, okay, I've got two PPM of this, obviously not close to a thousand. I have no obligation to report. 
And so what we see here is what was a reportable instance of this substance became unreportable as the, as the item moved through the supply chain. And so um, several other member states thought that this was not correct, this was an inadequate approach, and they challenged this in court. So what happened was is that the European Court of Justice ruled that these member states are correct. And their interpretation has been basically uh, happily named once an article, always an article, which means if that lead frame is an article, you can build it into anything you want. It's still an article and you still need to notify if that article contains this presence of a substance a very high concern over a thousand parts per million. Simple stuff. So basically what we're looking at here now is we have to take a look at and do things differently. And then this was actually just recently in June of 2017, confirmed by the European Chemicals Agency when they released their final version of the guidance for articles document. But it gives us examples of how to calculate these under this new ruling and also confirms that even subparts of components can be articles. So in other words, pieces of a resistor can be an article. So how does that change the supply chain communication structure? Okay, well, we take a look at the same situation here. I still have my lead frame. It's still got 10,000 PPM. I'm going to let my IC manufacturer know that. Now the IC manufacturer goes to um, sell their IC to the motherboard manufacturer, but their communication responsibilities have changed now. Now you can see that they still have to report that the SBHC is present because it's 10,000 parts per million of an article contained within the IC. We no longer get to dilute that by using the mass of the IC as the article base. We have to continue to use the original article concentration no matter how many, how many times it gets pushed through the supply chain. So this IC manufacturer is now gonna tell this motherboard manufacturer that this SBHC is present. We have it over a thousand parts per million. So guess what they need to do now? They need to do the same thing even though it's still only 25 ppm of their entire motherboard, it's actually 10,000 ppm at the lead frame level, which is once an article, always an article, so they have to notify the computer manufacturer. Now the computer manufacturer has the same problem. What they used to not have to do anything with, they now have to actually report. So they now have to tell their distributor in Europe that, hey, we have this SB8C present over a thousand parts per million in an article within our product. So you can see that the IC manufacturer who before this change no, didn't have to do any kind of communication, the motherboard manufacturer didn't have to do any kind of communication, and neither did the PC manufacturer, their status has all changed. The compliance status of all three of those products changed as a result of this ruling that changed the interpretation. Okay, so this is all great. So we can see that our compliance status may have changed but how are we expected to analyze down to pieces of components? It's a very difficult thing to do. Well, I'm gonna share with you how Greensoft is implementing a solution to solve this for our customers. So basically what we see here is we see a standard IC and we have the standard construction or homogeneous materials that we've extracted from the full material declaration they've provided us. So we can see this IC has a mold compound, a lead frame, a die attach, plating, die, a wire. So the, now the next thing we need to do before we can analyze this for SBHC content is determine which one of those elements are articles and which ones aren't. So we can see we've done that here. So we have, for each one of these materials, we've determined which one's an article and which one's not. And we've also noted that in some cases, some materials are actually subparts of articles. So in the case here, we can see A4 plating. A4 plating is actually part of the lead frame. So they take the lead frame, which is an article, and they plate it, and now we have a plated lead frame, which becomes yet another article. So if we have an SVHC in the plating, then you can see that we have to calculate that as a function of not only the mass of the plating, but the mass of the plating and the mass of the lead frame, because that's the article for which the plating belongs to. So it becomes very complex to do these kinds of analysis. This is a simple component, but as you get more into more detailed and elaborate components and items, it becomes more complex. Now, once you have done these kind of construction analysis, you've determined what an article is and what materials go with what sub-articles, if you will, you can then determine the compliance status as shown here, where we actually do the evaluation based on the article, sub-article base calculations, okay? And so the next question you might have is, okay, so this is what you guys are saying, but we're hearing different things from other people in the industry and we don't know who to believe. Well, 
I actually sat down and went over this exact same thing and went exactly over everything that we're doing right now and our interpretation and approach to meeting these requirements with the European Chemicals Agency. I held a meeting with them in August and what they said to me basically was that, hey, you guys are doing this correctly. Your definition of an article and how you're treating the different elements within a component is correct. The, your use of material aggregation flags to ensure that SVHC calculations are being combined correctly for different materials within an article or a complex object is correct. And this is exactly what we expect people to be doing. They also confirmed to me that subparts of electronic components, for example, the leads of a capacitor, um, the uh, anode of a, of, a, of a diode, those are all considered articles if they met the definition of an article before that individual component was produced. So if you're taking an anode and a cathode and combining those together on a substrate, that anode and cathode was an article before you made that component. It's still an article, and so you need to be evaluating your products down to that subpart level. Okay. They also gave a point to me that I want to make to you, and that's that in the case you cannot do this analysis, you're unable to get the data you need to break these components down to the material level, then they have an expectation that you're gonna take the conservative approach and use homogeneous thresholds, okay? You wanna actually avoid this at all costs because the more items you have to go down to the homogeneous level and apply substance restrictions there, the more reporting and communication responsibilities are kick in that you may not need to make. So you really wanna only take this conservative approach when you have no choice, okay? All right, so um, what do we want to do then? What do we need to do? So if we're working with suppliers of components, we need to go to those suppliers and make sure that they're actually evaluating their components correctly, that they're doing the true article level and not the part level or the product level that has been done in the past. This may mean we need additional information on the component construction to verify that. Um, it also means that we're going to need to realize our customers are going to expect the same level of information from us, and so we better be willing to provide that to them as well. Uh, the evaluation that can be very complex when you're evaluating these things, for example, if you have a piece of wire and you take that copper and you pull it through some insulation, that insulation was an article before you pulled the wire through, so it's an article now. However, if you take that copper wire and you dip it into insulation, that insulation was never an article, so it's just a subpart of the completed wire. So doing these kinds of analysis requires a certain amount of experience and expertise. Okay, Greensoft can do this for you. All right. So if you're using a software tool to validate reach compliance, that software tool has to have the ability to apply these aggregation bases for the materials in the part. If your solution cannot tell you that this particular homogeneous material is an article and this isn't, and this is how we need to do the calculations, then your software is unable to adequately validate reach to the existing requirements. GDM, our award-winning software, is in the final testing phases to roll out the artic article aggregation needed to support the once in article requirement, and that'll be in place within the next one or two months. Okay. Uh, Greensoft, what we do for you, we've been around for over 15 years. We do data collection and validation, so we work with your supply chain to make sure we get all the data for you. We've got all kinds of different versions of our software tool, everything from entry level, single seat, low cost solution to global, uh, you know, browser based global enterprise solutions. We have extensive experience in collecting, formatting, and analyzing this type of data. We're experts in working with your suppliers and with your um, team internally to make sure that this is done correctly and that you have the traceability and the due diligence data to back up your compliance claims. We also can do single individual turnkey projects. So if you just have one product or two products, you can simply give us the bomb and we can give you everything you need to show compliance. Okay. We're headquartered in, in Pasadena, California, but we have offices all over the world, and our data collection and validation processes are ISO 9000 certified. So what we really would like to do for you is help you take care of this problem for you, because we understand what a big problem it is. And you don't need to be worrying about this. You need to be worrying about developing your own core competency, competencies and products. So we'll go to your suppliers, we'll collect the needed data, we'll make sure they're validated to the latest article definition, and if they're not, we'll work with them and help them get it right. Um, if you use our software, you want to license our software, our software will have the article flags and concentration-based calculations in place to ensure that you have fully reached compliant product evaluations. Everything in the past is subject 
through interpretation. It's subject to review. And if you've done this using the old methods, you need to go back and redo it to the new methods because the compliance status of your parts and products will, may have changed. Okay. And then in the end, if you just want to turn over your bombs to us, we can do the turnkey project for you. Don't worry about the software. Don't worry about anything except, you know, giving us the bomb and then getting your reports at the end. That's also an option with us. So I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to me, and I hope that you have a great day.